constitutions in the world and it's one of the non-practical constitution. So it's our right and it's our constitutional right to understand, to follow, to live by this because the constitution in our Amanda. Too fat, too black, too white. Because of the Bill of Rights, I'm able to express my creativity. I have a voice. We are equally entitled to the rights and the privileges, to the rights and the benefits, to the rights. Oh. Freedom of expression. Our constitution is the most progressive in the world. Now, a simple yet powerful campaign, hashtag I am Constitution, is encouraging South Africans, young and old, to read, embrace and live it. And through creative arts, this complex topic is tackled. We want every citizen of South Africa to be engaged with hashtag I am Constitution. We have taken this discussion to university students, we've taken this discussion to politicians, and now we're taking this discussion to children. We've used the performing arts, we've used music, we've used the spoken word, and we want to be able to go out there and make this accessible to everybody. Let South Africans, not only young South Africans, but all South Africans, re-engage with their sense of what it means, or, or the sense of what it means to be a good citizen. Young South Africans are our future. They are the people that are going to be the business leaders, the politicians, the decision makers, the thought leaders, yeah. and their opinion is probably the most important opinion in the country. 30% of young South Africans believe that Africa is going in the wrong direction. The world is extremely pessimistic about Africa. It's pessimistic because it's heard all the bad news stories. Our role is to support the growth and development of this continent by telling the good news as well. We are passionate about using the creative arts to confront the challenges of today. To learn history through performance, through art, through drawing, through painting, to get emotionally engaged with their history. I think I, I can change the world, just like Nelson Mandela did. Yeah, I think I can do it. Our projects are as diverse as is the tapestry that makes up African culture. We're involved in oral history collection, we're involved in technology transfer, we're involved in innovation searches, we're involved in education. Our mission is to promote conversations, to encourage dialogue, to encourage debate. It is not enough for us to sit back and be armchair critics and say, what is the Constitution doing for me? What have you done to act on the Constitution? We don't want to be a generation that sweeps everything underneath the carpet. The history of our country is characterized by too much forgetting. It was Wimi Mandela and not Mandela's wife. An explosion in South Africa that would make the French Revolution look like a very early morning picnic. And if you haven't seen it yet, it's called Rainbow Makers, a tribute series, a brand new series on SABC2. It celebrates the untold stories of South Africa in a very entertaining and informative way, and I think something that is it's high time. The South African narrative, the South African story, today is so relevant all over the world. We all believe that we know our history, but we don't. We intend to create a portal, a portal that encourages people to add their stories to our stories. A portal that is going to create a history that is going to live in perpetuity. And we have spent many, many hours collecting video footage from people who were players on the stage, telling their stories in their words, in such a way that they cannot be misinterpreted, so that future generations can make up their own mind. And the African Oral History Archive is a living process. Since its inception, we have several hundred hours of real stories, important stories, to get people thinking about our history so that they can better shape their future. It is only through alliances and partnerships that protected areas can be made relevant to the needs of society. 
the African wilderness, our deserts, our forests, our savannas, if we don't value the preservation of our natural heritage, in a generation's time, it'll be too late. Ava and I work on a continental basis, and the, our involvement in anti-poaching has never been purely just about rhinos or just about, about elephants. It's been about species preservation as a whole. We close tonight in South Africa, where some high-flying dogs are tackling a serious poaching problem. Arrow is the first skydiving anti-poaching dog. Trainers in South Africa are experimenting with new ways of getting rangers onto the trail. These elite canine dogs are trained to immediately sniff out the poacher, <laughs> rushing to attack, <laughs> pinning him to the ground until more help arrives. Nearly 100 of these skydiving dogs have been placed in game reserves across Africa. We can't do this all on our own. We need the international community to embrace these projects. We need to be able to go out and raise awareness and raise funding to do this on a massive scale. We're all human and we all find out different aspects of conservation. I might discover something working with the cheetahs that somebody else working with cheetahs doesn't know or hasn't thought about. And that's just cheetahs. Think about all the other animals that there are. If we let these people keep on poaching the rhinos, it means that when my grandkids come, they will just hear that there was a rhino. They won't be able to see that rhino. It was kind of historic to have uh, musicians from uh, French orchestra, musicians from South African orchestra reunite and play together. My biggest dream is to become a musician. Just last week, that same area was the scene of chaos, but on Thursday night, it's going to be the scene of unity in music. We are so grateful that today we can be here as one speaking about peace. The resolution of the highly complex differences that we had in South Africa came about because of dialogue, because of debate, because of people finding each other and finding common ground. And, and music helps to do that. To see a thousand people of all races, of all colors, it showed the power of music and the arts to unite people together. It's extremely important to remember that the creative arts are the foundation of our culture, the foundation of our society. We want to promote culture as being as important as economics and sciences. And now we're very pleased to announce the launch of our Heritage Art Collection. It is the first professionally curated exhibition in the township. Artists from all over Africa talking about a common African narrative. The first wave of xenophobic attacks broke out here and spread to other parts of Gauteng. Seven years on, art is being used as a vehicle of expression. Artists from Alexandria north of Johannesburg and Sadek are showcasing their diverse works in the Art Crosses Borders exhibition. We allowed students to come and reflect their concerns about xenophobia visually and to engage about it. And, and, and through the art, we were able to create dialogue. We reflect what we come around and what we see and what we experience. The project shows art has no boundaries. Art is sharing the same space without complaining that, no, I was painted by a South African or I was painted by a Zimbabwean. That is something that should teach us about sharing borders and actually dissolving and crossing these borders. We become, we become human. Our Fine Line exhibition is an example of how we can use the creative arts as a way to teach analytical tools connected with our history. There are many views of history and we have to teach young South Africans to be able to make their own assessments of the facts. We came to realize that South Africans today, we've forgotten where we come from, we've forgotten the pain, the suffering, the work that our forefathers put into getting us to where we are today. We are here today because they made sacrifices. Ultimately, first and foremost, we ourselves live and embrace the values of our constitution. And that is what the paintings ask us to do, because if we can't do it, we can't ask anyone else to do it. The constitution as our supreme law uh, is the glue that really holds us together. If we live by 
it's prescripts. There's no way we can fail. And the fact that South African reality is not in tune or aligned to this aspirational document is evidence with this artworks you see here. Tell us about this uh, joining of forces with the Zaleka uh, Mandela Foundation. We need to take the action to see the change that we want to see. We need to go to the poor and try to lift them mm. and not create some kind of uh, dependency. I think the biggest mistake we made mm -hmm. as, a, as a people is we thought the struggle ended in 1994. The yeah. truth is it only started. Through our active citizenship program, we are conveying to people what their rights are, but also what their obligations are. The Ichikovets Family Foundation and Travel Massive are on a mission. They want all South Africans to speak the language of the Constitution. If the youth is not involved or is not aware what's going on, uh, we are going to have paralyzed leaders in the future. I'm at the basic right, right to equality, right to life, and right to dignity. One of the projects that really inspires me is Lungi Mbo's after school program. She is an active citizen. These kids come from poverty strike and backgrounds. They have their own uh, domestic uh, challenges. Through these programs, they've somehow erased that learning uh, challenge that they had in class. Inspiring these, these children to engage with their heritage, to engage with their history, to be involved in the performing arts and the visual arts, their school performance, their academic performance has improved because they've become more confident in themselves and they've become more active citizens. And the right to have their dignity respected. And all and organs of states. A provision of the Bill of Rights speaks a natural right without their informed dignity. It's been a great privilege to work with former President Khalima Motlante and to support his Inclusive Growth Forum. What is inspiring is that this is not just a talk shop. He calls it action through dialogue. And that is exactly what our foundation stands for. We are not prepared to wait. They need their issues to be addressed forthwith. What do young people want and how do we give it to them? They want a society that they can feel part of, that they can feel inclusive um, and uh, included in. We need leaders who are accountable to the people. We need leaders who really are selfless. We decided we're not going to lose focus. It's about the future of our country. We will impose peace on violence. While we are fighting for what we're fighting for, it's, it's highly important that we remember what the Constitution says so that we don't find ourselves on the wrong side of history one day. Even though we, it is incorporated into our life orientation classes to some extent in high school, I don't think it's adequately taught. I feel like the citizens of South Africa are undermining the Constitution, taking into consideration the things that are happening, especially burn, the burning down of the schools. I can do better because I can, I can learn from that generation and do my own generation. We're taking our African oral history archive, our heritage art collection, and our conservation programs together with our active citizenship program and putting it together into a educational program so that we're leaving a legacy to the education system to teach active citizenship through conservation, through our history archive, and through the visual arts in the schools. We're very privileged to be living in Africa at this particular moment in history. We've gone through a tumultuous, troubled past. We now have the privilege of being able to sculpt our future. And in order to sculpt our future, we need to preserve our culture through our heritage. We need to preserve our environment through conservation. And we need to build a generation of active citizens who can take these two great assets and turn them into an incredible future. I am a politician. I am an advocate. I am a dietitian. I am an astronaut. I am an orthodontist. I am a teacher. I am a professor in mathematics. And I am the president.